We are in the Victoria Rooms in Grey Street, Newcastle, in the spring of 1854. We're in the Great Hall of Commerce, 52 Threadneedle Street, London, in 1855. We are jostled by a great crowd of many hundreds at the Temperance Hall, Sheffield, in 1856. We are on Broadway, New York, in the same year. You've paid your entry and mounted two flights of stairs. Gradually, through the gloom, the mysteries begin to reveal themselves. Never has coal vapor been generated to such purpose. In the yellow gaslight, the three great paintings seem to live and move and have their own being. You can just make out the deepest gorge and a blood-red sky. You see Christ, his clothes as white as snow, seated in judgment, high above on his throne, holding open the Book of Life. Around the throne are four and twenty elders, clothed in radiant white and wearing crowns of gold. To the left, you can see those whose actions have been judged to be just, the selfless. See amongst them Shakespeare, Newton, Michelangelo, and Milton. Virtuous women, innocent children, true and pure lovers. Nations meeting in universal brotherhood. And Jerusalem, the holy city, with its beautiful colonnades on the cliff above them. But there, to the right, a myriad of wailing souls. The accursed. Greedy moneylenders, lecherous false prophets, the avaricious, vain and selfish, grasping at their worldly treasures. And look at her, the whore of Babylon, clothed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold, precious stones and strings of pearls, mother of harlots with whom the kings of the world have fornicated, running and reaching to the sky, face caught in his light. The archangels sound the last trumpets to the four corners of the earth. An earthquake splits the valley in two, from end to end. A railway train plunges into the chasm. Armies besiege the saints and the beloved city. War, with its hideous engines and vain trophies, is impelled headlong into the yawning abyss. And above them all, the black, Avenging angel hurling bolts of lightning and fire from heaven. See, the moon has become like blood. The awful glow of furnaces in full blaze in the depth of night. The terrible red blaze of light the liquid fire. Smoke rising from the bottomless pit. A crowd, not of hundreds or thousands, but a legion. A dark, gray multitude. A man facing us, his arms raised. Others amongst the crowd, crying out for salvation. They are unclothed, semi-clad and grasping at the air, wailing, reaching and falling. You see a naked woman falling, falling, whilst another covers her face with her arm and turns away from the abyss, from the regions of hell, from everlasting punishment. There are lightning blasts, falling rocks and mountains, 
cities collapsing, buildings ruined, pillars and broken masonry all coming down. The mountains and islands have all been moved out of their places. Heaven has departed and our world has been turned upside down. Look, the heavenly plains, the rivers and the sea. The sea and rivers of bliss shimmering there. A sea of glass with palm trees around it. And there on a mountainside, trees well watered and evergreen. The cedars of Lebanon. There are red and white roses bursting into bloom. On a flower-clad hillock, a group of chubby cherubs play amongst the blossoms. Figures in white robes appear to float above the tranquil waters and pastures. Some reach up into the air, another plucks the strings of a harp. Mountain rises over snow-capped mountain, and the lofty domes of a celestial city beyond imagining, its summits reaching the clouds. New Jerusalem, built here, built here on the plains of heaven. <clears throat> so, you can see that these are the most sublime and extraordinary pictures in the world. Their subjects are terrible mysteries, which the artist has treated with a boldness of fancy, a grandeur of invention, and a mastery which none but himself could command. The power of art in conveying to the mind impressions which words would fail in rendering forcible was never more awesomely displayed than in these pictures from the hand of John Martin. It is impossible to convey by words any just idea of these wonderful paintings. As you are gathered here right now, so Martin gathers all the people from the beginning of the world to receive their final judgment. At the touch of his paintbrush, as of a magician's wand, earth and heaven are torn apart, and all sins and sinners await destruction. The high and the low, the greatest and the meanest, all of every age, country and station will be judged, just as you here will be judged. And some will be overwhelmed by the earthquake and swept down the abyss into the bottomless pit. And some will be crushed by falling mountains or blasted by lightning. Others will be abandoned to grief, horror and despair at their eternal doom. And you will see the sky rolled up like a scroll. And you will see the sun darken. The earth trembles and topples, crumbles and sinks in universal ruin and utter, utter annihilation. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand? And out of this chaos, these exhausted worlds, Martin imagines things anew, and a magnificent landscape of his own creation is reared. Behold, I see a new heaven and a new earth. 
for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and there is no land and no more sea. And I see the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, and he will wipe away all tears from your eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, all things will be made anew.